pretty flat in the end. James, it certainly was pretty flat. It was a pretty choppy day as well. We sort of saw some ups and downs, but unfortunately, uh, pretty boring closing on that flat line, as you mentioned. Unfortunately, we really weren't able to, to um, lead off from those positive uh, leads that we got from US and European markets overnight. Um, as, I, as we've mentioned before, it is all about this earnings season, and I think investors are probably still a little bit cautious coming into the final week. We do know that often the final week there are some poorer performers, sometimes some laggers coming through. So I do think think that investors are sort of reflecting a bit of cautiousness. Although if we look at those volumes, they were still fairly good uh, coming in at about $4 billion. But the best performers today really being those dividend stocks. We saw healthcare, telecommunications and financials all doing quite well. We also saw sort of Telstra, Woodside and QBE uh, all performing pretty strongly ahead of their dividend payments. But unfortunately, the ones under pressure today yet again was that materials sector, although it did recover uh, coming into the end of uh, or close of session today. But the worst performance being that property sector as well as energy. Looking at that material sector, we've continued to see that iron ore price falling off now below 90 US dollars a tonne. So certainly uh, putting pressure on those iron ore players. But uh, as you've said, uh, a pretty flat day. Your thoughts, Leanne? Oh, look, certainly I think, uh, as, as Mark was saying, I think there is some value in that housing construction sector. Um, we're seeing those building approvals sort of picking up. And so I do think uh, once we do start to see a recovery in that sector, uh, some of those stocks could start uh, doing well. But uh, as we know, some of the banks at the moment are looking uh, like they are pretty high levels. And so uh, certainly um, I think in, in terms of value, I do think that construction sector, um, but also in terms of that materials sector, even though uh, we are seeing some of these commodity prices coming under pressure, we still do very much like some of those uh, those stocks in that material sector, particularly some of those iron ore miners as we have spoken about before. But I do think as long as we are seeing these interest rates at record lows, we are going to uh, continue seeing investors jumping into these high yielding stocks. Um, so I do think that's probably going to be a continuing theme as we have seen over this reporting season. A number of companies really continuing to increase their dividends, really reflecting investors' appetite for yield. What do we uh, switch back to some of the reports out today, but I suppose follows on from, you know, sort of balanced portfolio. Portfolios. I'm not, sus not. I'm suspecting bought long year doesn't figure in any sort of a balanced portfolio of yours. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, another shocking one today. Um, the worst performer uh, on the on the ASX today. Of course, following that very weak result that came through, uh, those earnings down 77%, revenues falling off, and of course their net debt really does remain very high. But it really was their outlook commentary that put the pressure on that share price today. They are expecting uh, the remainder of 2014 uh, to be very challenging, and I think that's raised a lot of concerns for investors today. Of course, we know a lot of these. Mining services companies have been under pressure since the GFC. Having a look at some of the positives out of it, they have said that they are continuing their cost reduction program. They're expecting their capital expenditure to be down about $25 million in 2014. And of course, um, the company sort of indicated that they do believe they've reached a bit of a market bottom at this stage in terms of those utilisation rates. But of course, we do know this is all dependent on those uh, commodity prices. And of course, uh, mining companies are continuing their expansion plans. So it, obviously, if we continue seeing those coming under pressure, that's still going to place that pressure on this stock as well. But really, the negative being that they're expecting flat demand and those uh, margins to continue coming under pressure. They have indicated that that strategic review is continuing, but there's really a lot of concern out there in terms of how successful they've been in terms of recapitalising their balance sheet and paying down that debt, which, as I said, is very high. So I think at this stage, uh, it's reflecting a lot of nervousness from investors seeing that huge huge sell-off today and I certainly think there's a lot of speculation around that this company is going to go into administration and they don't really have much longer uh, to go so I, I certainly wouldn't be a, a holder of this stock at this stage. Yeah, Mike.